You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Each week, Cheryl will feature and discuss the many challenges of those living with disabilities, along with the various issues that are faced by their families that are caring for them. So now, please welcome the host of Courage to Overcome, Cheryl Jennings. Welcome. Welcome to tonight's show. This is Courage to Overcome, and I am Cheryl Jennings, your host. And as always, I'm very happy to have you as my guest tonight while we talk a little bit about some of the impact that can happen to family members while they might have uh, a family member in the hospital, especially if they're in ICU. As I have been struggling with some of the issues of my son the last few weeks, and he's undergone three surgeries in three weeks. It has been a very uh, stressful time for our family, and I've learned a lot during this time that I'd like to share with you. And part of what I've learned is how to care for the caregiver. There have been studies that have been showing that when you have a loved one in intensive care or ICU, that it can produce a lot of stress and anxiety in the family members of the relatives that are there. And they've documented that, that even 80% of the family members often have this stress or anxiety while that family member is there. And sometimes it can linger on for maybe three months after the family member has been released from the hospital. So it's something that we want to take seriously and to understand what can we do when someone you love is in the hospital and what can we do that will help protect the caregiver, the family members that are looking after this person that's in the hospital. Now, sometimes when you have a child that cannot speak for themselves, as ours does, we have to be in the room most of the time in order to help the nurses, the doctors, and the therapists that come in and out and want to ask him questions that he cannot answer. We also understand a lot about some of the movements, how to get him to respond, what he's saying when he does respond that they may not understand, how to work around some of those issues that will make it easier for them to give the right kind of care. And so during this last experiment of being in different hospitals and having to undergo things, we were uh, really stretching ourselves, trying to be able to stay in a hotel to try to get some rest. And yet during that time, we realized how much money has been spent to just take care of us, and we couldn't do that anymore. About that time that we were just thinking, how are we going to keep on doing this, we discovered a wonderful program that is in Sherman, Texas, that is absolutely something that I wanted to bring attention to and help you understand why this was built and what good that it does for the families who have family members that are in the hospital. And I know that not all family members are in ICU, but when they are, the stress is even greater because you don't feel like you can be away from them. Or if you are, you don't want to be further than down the hall. But you do need to take care of yourself to get some rest, to eat right, and to do things that sometimes it's very difficult to even do to to take care of your own body. We have found a, the most wonderful place that's called Reba's Ranch House that was actually started for the very purpose of caring for families. And tonight I have as my guest Marilyn Bryce, who is the 
director of this wonderful place that Reba McIntyre have helped to start years ago. And I want her to give us all of the information about it. It, it was just a, a fantastic experience to meet people who were so lovingly caring for family members, trying to make sure that all their needs are met. And while we're on this show tonight, I want her to describe some of the things that are done what can happen in other places that would help family members while they're having a loved one that's in the hospital, especially for a week or two weeks or longer at a time. And so, first of all, I just want to welcome Marilyn. Marilyn, are you there? And could you just welcome to our show tonight? Thank you, Cheryl. Yes, I'm here, and I'm excited to be here. (laughs) Well, I am excited to have you for sure, because you have been a godsend to us and to be able to open the doors of a wonderful place that gave us such respite care and gave us nourishment for our physical bodies as well as our spiritual bodies. And I just would love to ask you to just begin by telling us a little bit about how the idea started and why it caught on. What was it that made this something so unique? Well, first of all, it's very strange to have a facility of this type in a small county. And Grayson County in Texas is a small county, even though we cover a large portion of Oklahoma, too. So we're right on the border. And Reba McIntyre was born and raised in Stringtown, Kiowa, in the area, that area of Oklahoma, which is about 40 miles from here. All of the medical facilities were here in Denison, and she began to come over here to be taken care of her family and, and all of her sisters as they married everyone. So she knew all of the medical facilities, and she went to college at Southeastern, which is in Durant, about 10 miles from here. All of this rather led up to her meeting Dr. Darius Madge here in Denison, and he was very interested in Reba and worked with her through the years. And then he told her as she began to really get popular that she needed to look into a way to try to give back to all of the people who had done so much for her. So when that happened she began to realize how many people were staying in the hallways, in the waiting rooms, wherever they could stay, even if it was a car. Number one, they couldn't afford to get hotels while their families were in the hospital. Excuse me. Nor did they have a place to stay. So when she started thinking along those lines, she began to work with all of the people here in Denison on what could be done and how could they do it. And this was in the late 80s. By 1991, everything was under control and construction was going. And on September the 24th, 1992, the first Reba's Ranch House opened its doors with eight beds and began to take in guests. Today, 25 years later... We have served over 36,000 people. Wow. And we a new house that we opened in 2010, and we, have, we now have 12 rooms. So we've grown naturally as the medical field has grown so much. It's really grown in this area. And we serve in the Sherman and Denison, which are sister cities. We, have ser- we serve four different hospitals and rehabilitation centers. We are very blessed because we're open to any disease, any, you know, we're not designated to cancer only or to transplants only. We are open to anyone who has someone in ICU or someone in the hospital. You know, this is wonderful, Marilyn, because we are some of those people who've slept in the hallways and chairs trying to stay in the room because it gets very expensive to be able to stay somewhere while your loved one is being cared for. And for us, we thought, oh, this will be a couple of days, and it's turned out to be more than three weeks now. So 
in a very short time, you can really get a lot of bills on your credit cards that you feel like you just don't know how much longer you can continue to do that. So, you know, I am, I'm so grateful for this. And the funny thing is my husband grew up just about 12 miles from where Reba grew up. He grew up in Otoka. Uh huh. So, you know, we were very interested in this and what she has done. Uh, Go ahead and tell us a little bit more about why, I mean, this is similar to a Ronald McDonald house, but there's so many differences. And what what I see here is just, it's totally amazing. Go ahead and tell us a little bit more about this. Well, the one thing I want to say on this subject of caregiving and what it does to you, several years ago, a study was done and they realized that over 80% of all bankruptcies in America are caused by a medical situation. I can believe that. Yes, you've been there. You know what this does. Right. But we, right. they also began to study and realized that Whenever you go without water and go without sleep and go without food, that your brain begins to shut down and it can't really comprehend everything that the doctors are trying to tell you and what you need to do and what you need to do for your patient. So we have set up, and, and you're familiar with this, but we have little snack kits that we have here in the in the living room, along with water bottles. And the main reason we do that is to try to make sure that the caregiver learns how to take care of themselves first because you can't do anything for the patient if you can't take care of yourself. That's true. So it's really rough with that. But the house itself um, has gone through several little changes, but in essence, we have not changed at all on our services. Right now, we do not charge anyone, which is very unusual. Most houses have a small fee, but it's, you know, $35, $45 compared to a hotel, which are $120 on up, depending on what city you're in. So it makes a huge difference knowing that you do not have to pay these prices if you just know where to look. And it will. That's absolutely right. And even if you've got some of the houses that are cheaper, like they do for Baylor, where we are in Dallas, they've got a waiting list. I mean, we're on a waiting list, but there are so many people. And a lot of times those families need to stay long times, you know, because some of the right. people that are in Baylor are very ill. They go through transplants or heart surgeries or such major operations that they may be here for a while. And it's it's wonderful that they have now begun to develop the homes, the Ronald McDonald homes now have separate wings for transplants because you, it's such a, a demanding surgeries and the health care that goes with it to keep you from being exposed to anything and to keep anyone from being around you. It is just horrendous what it takes to get this done. And yet they're now becoming very successful because they have figured this out and know what to do. But here at Reba's, we, um, it doesn't matter who is in the hospital. You have to be a family member who is responsible for caring for that person in the hospital. You need to be able to take care of yourself, and then you need to be where you can, if you need to switch out with another family member, we work with you on that situation also. The doctors know that the family members who are in intensive care do much better, get out much faster if they have a family member with them. But if you can't afford to stay, you're not helping anyone. So that's one of the, one of the main reasons that we try to keep our service as open as possible 
and try to help as many people as we can. Well, and I just have to say that Reba's is just such a wonderful place. And from the moment you walk in the front doors, you just have nothing but wonderful people to meet you, greet you, and to find out how your day is going and what your needs are. We're going to need to take our first break. And I am just delighted to have you, Marilyn, as my guest on tonight. And when we come back, I want to find out more about Reba's house and what others might want to do in their communities also. We'll take a break and we'll be back in just a moment. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the other things that we can find out about Reba's house. And tell us a little bit about how did you get the community involved in helping with bringing in the meals? That was one of the most wonderful things that happened there, too. Well, it's amazing that it seemed as though the first director and the board would meet and talk and someone would have a suggestion. They worked very closely together and they had women start calling the churches to see if it would be possible for them to bring food to the house. And even though at that point it was right behind the hospital and owned by the hospital, you still have three meals a day that you need to you know, prepare or find food somewhere. So that worked out very well, and there was a small kitchen in that house. We have a very large kitchen in this one, and we're set up where people can bring their own food in and cook if that's what they prefer. If they go out to eat, they can keep it in one particular refrigerator so that it's there if when they want it. We uh, have another refrigerator that's there with food from the different churches and from people just who kindly bring things in and it's available to anyone at any time of the day or not that they're hungry. And you know, being in a hospital, you never know when you're going to feel like eating or when you might be hungry. So it's very good to be able to be in a home-like atmosphere so you can walk to the refrigerator and find something and put it in the microwave and, and have a meal that makes a huge difference. But they worked with getting the food. And of all the things we have learned, we, we do not have transportation. We're such a small city. So there's no public transportation that has reliable set routes. And the hospitals are a good distance apart. 
And that has been a constant trial. That's something that we will continue to always work on and try to get it set up where they can have a way to get back and forth just so that um, it's easier to survive, shall we say. But back in the beginning, whenever we got it set up, the um, people who worked with the hospitals were very good in working with them and working with the churches, and it became a community effort. Everyone is very supportive and has been in 20, oh, sorry, 2007, the hospital became public hospital instead of private and Reba wanted the you know wanted to be the house to be a private and not a public institution so we were purchased by a foundation and the foundation owns us to this day which is wonderful so we have an endowment that we receive funds we have donations, and we always need donations, not only food, but um, we have a Christmas list. We always have things out that we need. As you can imagine, there's always something that's broken or needs to be repaired, <laughs> updated. It's just like living at home, trying to keep everything going. But well, one we of are the very things blessed. that... One of the things that I really was impressed with was um, we happened to be put into one of the rooms that a husband of uh, a lady that had passed away, he had furnished that, and it was just wonderful. And it, it just made me realize how many people would probably love to do something where they could do a gift like that to do it in honor of a family member that maybe has been served there or has gone through the hospital system there in that area. Because, you know, we never know um, where people are going to want to put their money. But if they can think in terms of helping people, they don't even know how blessed are they for the gifts that are passed on to one person after the other that gets the benefit of it. You know, I was very impressed with that. What do you do? What do yes. you mean about the Christmas gifts? What are you, what do you do for that? Oh, we have a Christmas list of, um, I think last year, our big item was a new vacuum cleaner. And we had a community member who went out and bought us a vacuum cleaner and brought that to us. But the paper here is really good about running stories on what all of the nonprofits in town need. And then you have a choice of, you know, if that's something that you prefer to do to help or help a family however you like to do your giving at Christmas. But that works very well. We have had, in, in the beginning, we had many fundraisers. And Reba gave concerts, and all of the proceeds went to the endowment to keep, you know, get the house built and then to help keep it running. So wow. there's a lot of little wow. ways that you can do things. And I think about people who have nothing in these towns, but they have good medical systems. It's always, if you are single or if you're married and you have a couple of extra bedrooms, you could offer your bedrooms through the church or through the hospital and, you know, see if you couldn't get something set up. There are so many different ways to have small apartments and houses and even just a room that you could donate for other people to use. Well, you know, that's a great idea, Marilyn, especially now that people are using their own homes as those Airbnb, uh, and that's a way that people have been renting their rooms out. But if they knew that there were family members who needed to stay away from home for such a long period of time, it doesn't take a lot of uh math to figure out that you've got thousands of dollars of just taking care at your minimum, you know, not trying to eat a lot, but not trying to stay in a fancy place, but being gone away from home for a long period of time 
can really rack up the bills. So that's a great idea. What's another way? I remember seeing there was a room there. Tell us about the Room of Hope that's there, too. The Room of Hope was set up by, uh, I believe she was 17 when she started it, a young woman who was working on her Gold Star Award in Girl Scout. And her mom was a doctor, and she wanted to try to find a way to help women who had had cancer. And she was very familiar with the fact that you lose your hair, and a lot of women can't afford wigs. So there's a real traumatizing thing in, you know, sometimes it's not being diagnosed with having cancer. It's losing your hair when you start chemo that really is so upsetting. So she started this room, and she she outgrew it. Everyone started donating scarves and every pillows, everything that they had needed whenever they had gone through chemo and had gone through surgeries. So she organized it all, brought it to us. We started out with a small closet. Now we have a room that's about 10 by 12, I guess. And it's totally full, and we have two storage closets full. I think we have 150 wigs, and everything Mm -hmm. that we have in there is free. You just have to be going through chemo, and women are wonderful. They may wear the wigs three months, and they wash them and clean them and bring them back, and then they're there for someone else. So there's no reason to not be served and to be helped when you're going through this. Wow. Well, I just saw that room was just amazing because, well, and also to think that a young girl had thought this up and was able to collect so many different items and get the word out because you never realize how many things are going to change in your life until you start going through it. You know, every illness has got different problems, but cancer is one that surely has affected so many people that we all know. And the trauma of losing your hair and then trying to look for something, it it is just a a very amazing gift that this young lady has worked on. And I have to commend her for what she's done that has been there for so many people to take advantage of. And the fact that everything that you do at Reba House is free for the families that need this is just something that really touched my heart so much. And just to see the kindness. And then when we walked in the first time, I know I was just bawling. I was just in tears. And one of the other family members, you know, other families that was staying there got up and she just hugged me and the next day when she saw me she came right over and hugged me again and we pray for each other when they're there and I I learned about her family members she learned about mine and that's a very supportive thing just to know that others can feel your pain and can share your heartaches but also share when things turn around and maybe go in the right direction. Well, and I think it's very important for people to to have the opportunity to meet other people who are going through the same things that you're going through because they know immediately that you can understand right. all of the questions that they have and the fears that they have and what are they going to do about this and what are they going to do about that. And it's very reassuring to know that someone else is making it through this, so you can too. Right. And it's well, and that's one reason that why positivity. I wrote that book. Well, in yeah. writing that book on it, it takes courage to be a caregiver. It was to give hope to people who are caregiving and don't know someone else who is doing it. There are lots of people, there are millions of people who are doing the caregiving but they just don't happen to know them. And like you said, just to know another person that feels the same heartache and feels the same need for prayer and for someone to just understand them is just a tremendous blessing there. We're going to need to take another break, and I know you're as glad as I am to have Marilyn on here and explaining what all 
can be done in a different community. She's giving you lots of ideas, so I hope you're taking notes. We are, this is Courage to Overcome. I am Cheryl Jennings, your host, and we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll give you a little bit more information. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit wikiwags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit mywikiwags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Okay, tonight's program is looking on how we can take care of the caregivers, especially while family members are in the hospital. And we've had on our guest, as our guest tonight, Marilyn Bryce, who is the one that is caring for Reba's Ranch House in Texas. And it's such a wonderful, wonderful place to be. And I had the privilege of just being able to be there just lately, and so I know how great it was. One of the things I was very impressed with, too, in this whole house was how many of Reba's uh, guitars, her, I mean, and things that have been donated by other stars, how they've helped with raising money to help this house. And tell us a little bit about some of the things that have been done that have uh, been part of the groundbreaking to get this to the point where it is right now? Well, I think the first concert that Reba did was in 1987, and she did, in actuality, I think she's done over 10 major concerts where she rolled in with an unbelievable amount of equipment, trucks loaded down with everything that they had to have for stages and and for all of the people, Reba was really good about bringing one very well-known star and one who was an up-and-coming star in the country music field. And when she did that, she hit all ages, and people had a better understanding of who was there and what was going on. And she was very good with her talent. She knew exactly who to choose. Let's put it that way. But there are so many giving people in the country music industry that they were all very excited to be able to help her out and help her get this house started. But those concerts were every Memorial Weekend, and we had golf tournaments, we had concerts, we had multiple things going on to try to raise funds over that one weekend, one time a year, to get the house going. Wow. So that, yes, it, uh, and it was quite exciting. There were a lot of committees and a lot of people who literally dedicated their year to be able to get all of the productions going and, and get it set up the way it should be. 
But the last well, and, one. You know, go ahead. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I was just going to say that the last one that we had, a tornado came through right oh. after the concert. Yes, before they had everything down and really just tore up so much equipment that um, it was it just was prohibitive to be able to you know haul that equipment around and for her to be able to do that anymore. Oh. That is too bad that that happened. But, you know, one of the things I've noticed um, with some of the tornadoes, the hurricanes, and the different things that have happened, wounded warrior projects, how many people that are in the country music field, as well as some of the stars, have made such a difference? But I see more musicians that seem to reach out and just start doing things like this in a local community or for servicing a particular group of people um, that have been very amazing and very giving. And I see that as something that once people start seeing a person that is like Reba, who is a very giving person to their community where they grew up or where they went uh, for like her for medical services to go back to this area, I just think people catch on and start thinking, well, what can I do? I'm not a big star. I can't do what she's doing. But everything that can be done, I mean, all the little things that have to happen to keep this facility running are just tremendous gifts, like the people that do bring in the food, how important that is. And they may not think they're doing very much. But as families are needing hot meals and to walk in and to have that right there where they can eat when they're so tired and just go completely crash on a bed for a while does renew the family spirit and helps them to endure a lot more of what they're dealing with with a a family member who is ill. And so I just have to say, I'm just, I'm I'm so grateful that I've gotten to meet you and to, even though it was such a brief time to be there, to just see what's possible. And Marilyn, you've got some great people that are working there. The staff, the people are very caring. Well, and even the last day to to make uh, an acquaintance with Mitch, he was there and he, the first time we saw him, he was just bringing in groceries and bringing in things and worked on the TV and did things like that. And yet how sweet he's been. You know, I just loved it. Yes. We absolutely have the best staff in the world and they love what they're doing and they love people and it means so much to them to be able to give back and to help others. And I think that's why they're all um, have such servant hearts and it, you know, they wouldn't even identify themselves that way, but that's what they are. They're just servant hearted people who want to be there and really care about what's going on in your life and how they can help you. Oh, that's great. Well, we all need to be surrounded with people who are giving and loving and care about others because that's what makes life so much easier and makes it, I just, I, I have always felt like with um, our son needing to be helped by so many other people that I might not be able to do everything that he needs, but I can help someone else and it makes me feel useful and feel good that I can pass on something that another person needs and it really boosts my spirits you know it makes me feel good when I know that I have been of help to someone who's in need even if it's just a shoulder to cry on or to pray for them or something because you know we all get down when we and especially if we're watching a person who is suffering we'd rather it be us than them when you feel so helpless and especially if it's a child or your parents, you you feel like, you know, you just hate for them to go through any of the suffering, but it happens. So this is a wonderful thing that y'all have been doing there. Tell people how they can find out more information about this. I know you have a magazine that came out, and I read that beautiful article in there, but tell them how they can find out a little bit more about Reba's House or 
anything that's similar to that that you know about? You can start by going to rebusranchhouse.com and, excuse me, .org. Whenever you go there, you can see the house, you can read about us, and see exactly what we do. Now, there is a an association, which is a national association, called healthcarehospitality.net. Whenever you, it's hhnetwork.org. That's hhnetwork.org. And it is all of the hospitality houses in the United States um, that have an interest or know about it are members of the association. You can go on that website. There is a listing of all of the members and all of the houses that they know about. So you can get information that way. You can go to oh, Joe's. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. Okay, Joe, J-O-E-S, house.org. And through that, it will give you, if you type in the city and the state, it will give you all of the hospitals. You choose the hospital where your patient's going to be, and it will give you a listing of all of the the hotels in that area and those that have reduced rates. So oh, okay. it helps you find out what that is, and most of that is really more, Joe's house is really more for cancer patients, but that's something that everyone needs to know anyway. Okay. So there are several ways, and, and whenever you go to these sites, you just learn more and more until you you know actually find exactly what it is you need or what you want. Oh, well, that's good. Well, those are things that I wasn't aware of, too. So um, I did get on there and try to look up some medical discounts on hotels down in Dallas, but the, the hotels that are closed are still very expensive. So the discount is may seem like a lot, but it's not when you have a lot of days in those. I do want to stop for a minute and just mention that we have a book out that's on Amazon, and it's called It Takes Courage to Be a Caregiver. And this is a book that tries to encourage people to look for ways that you can help support support families that are going through the caregiving experience from either having a child that has special needs or has some kind of a terminal illness like cancer to caring for your parents who might have Alzheimer's, dementia, or just be needing care for a long time. And I feel like this has been just the beginning of trying to put together resources to help families to know where to go, what's out there, what can help them. And then for those of you who don't have someone in that situation, to just understand some of the things that they are going through that might be different from your family. But I do have to say that we have so many people who are getting older, living longer, that if you're not a caregiver now, you probably will be if you live to be very old because we're getting where the parents that are getting to be the oldest, they never experienced the caregiving of their parents because they died earlier. But this is new, and for those of us who are getting older and are caring for our parents, we need to learn what it's going to be like. Where do you go for some of the things that you need, the resources, and where do you find other people who are also going through this? Because it's a lonely thing if you have not realized it. If you have a family member who needs to be cared for on a daily basis that family never gets up and thinks, oh, what can we go do today without thinking first? What does that person need to make sure that they're cared for, that their needs are being met? So this is something that sharing all this information is good because it allows others to prepare for something that they might see it's coming in their life. Or it could be that you have a spouse that's in the military and they come home and they have totally come home 
at, with problems they didn't have before they left. We're going to need to take another break, and when we come back, we'll have some closing comments about other things that can be done. And so I'm glad that you're with us. This is Courage to Overcome. We'll be back in just a moment. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality based in quebec canada joanne is also a space coach using social media and skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world contact joanne charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 now is your time Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Okay, and for those of you who've been interested in Reba's Ranch, and you'd like to get more information about this, I do want to just tell you, they have a wonderful room that is just a big library with comfortable chairs so that you can just sit down and have some quiet moments just to read. Or they do have these outdoor little patio areas where you can go sit and just be alone, just really be able to be by yourself a little bit and enjoy just a a few minutes of quiet time not being stressed out. If you would like more information, you can go to www.texoma, and that's T-E-X-O-M-A, health dot, that's 903-463-7322. That's 903-463-7322. And this would give you more information. And for those of you who have enjoyed this program and would like to be able to do something similar in your own community, I would say go after it because this is something that until you're in a situation of being away from home for a period of time and not realizing how much something like that would benefit you. I just know that this was a great benefit to everyone who's been able to stay in this wonderful place, but it's something that many communities could absolutely learn from and be able to have something similar. And I love the idea that Marilyn gave us that you could also have little homes that are bought up around a hospital by and be bought by the hospital to provide some of the care or places for family members to stay when they do have a loved one that's maybe in ICU or they're in for a long period of time. There's just a lot of ways that this could be worked out that could benefit many people who are caring for a loved one, but the caregivers need to be cared for also. I just am very impressed with so many of the programs that I find out there and being able to share them with you on a week to week. So many programs that I've never heard of, so many people who are doing research or investigating different problems that are out there that 
maybe you haven't thought about until your family member has to face that issue. Uh, we've had so many people helping us learn about autism and so many programs that are going on. And I do want you to remember to go to the Facebook on Parents as Partners and try to go to that page to see what's being offered there that is free. And that's something I had uh, a lady on here a couple of times telling about some of the research and the programs that are going to be put on to a website called Parents as Partners. And go to that page and like it on Facebook because that helps Google to rank it higher and to be able to know what's being done that is of value to other people. I do want to mention, too, that if you're interested in thinking about something for Christmas for your relatives, if you want to go to Amazon, I have the book, It Takes Courage to Be a Caregiver. But just in the last week, I've been in two more books that have come out. And they are not on Amazon yet, but you could order them from me if you're interested. One is called In Her Shoes, From Perfection to Acceptance. And the other book that's out is called In Her Shoes, A Stronger Version of Me. And in those books, I try to describe some of the things that have helped me to become a stronger person. And a lot of it is... Uh, related to some of the challenges that I've had to go through in life and being able to be strong for someone else, to be able to take care of other people and to be able to offer the support to people who are often in need of that support physically or emotionally. And I also have programs that are available if you're interested in becoming a better caregiver, to be more confident, to be able to feel good about what you're doing, learn how to take care of yourself so that you are able to take care of your family, uh, and especially if you have family members that are ill or you're caring for your parents. It takes a lot of thought and of planning to be able to take care of yourself when you are that caregiver. We are excited to have you on the program each week. And if you have a need, you can call me on my cell phone. It is 580-591-6868. And ask about a coaching program if you're interested in that or if you just want to connect. But I also am putting blogs out there about caregiving on a new site called todayscaregiving.com. And I'm always glad to have the feedback to know that the programs are touching you and they're something that is helping you to understand either what you're going through in your own life or your friends or family are going through. And so any way that you'd like to connect with me, I'd love to be able to know what needs that you have and be able to maybe see about doing a program that's related to the issues that are very difficult for you. I'm very grateful for you being supportive of this program. If you know that you have friends that would like to hear a program that's already been on, you can go to bbmglobalnetwork.com backwards slash courage dash to the number two dash overcome. And the programs are on there and it tells you just briefly what each one is about. And we store those on there for your benefit so that you can learn about any kind of program or problem that we've already talked about. If it's from caring for a child all the way through caring for your parents, but whatever it is in between, there are so many things that deal and give us such a, a jolt in life that make it very difficult and we don't know exactly where to turn, but we try to provide the information and some of the places that you can go to get the support that you need in times that are very tough for, for you. I appreciate you being here each week. And I, once again, this is Courage to Overcome because we want you to have courage to overcome the problems that you're facing in your own life and to be able to know that you can bounce back and become a stronger person because you have overcome a challenge that's maybe tough for you. 
And that's really and truly the way that we do grow the most is when we have things that are difficult, we learn how to overcome it and then share with someone else. One of the things I do want to mention too, for young parents, when you have children who are just learning and they're struggling with something, maybe they don't like something another person did or they they come to you and want you to settle everything for them. Remember that you handicap that child when you don't allow them to work out some of their own problems as they're growing up. Don't work out everything for them. Don't take up for them every time they are facing a tough challenge. It's through those little challenges that we're able to face bigger challenges in life. And the more challenges that you overcome, the stronger you are as a person. But the weaker you are if someone always steps up and interferes and takes over to take up for you. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to make our children weaker. We want to make them stronger. And that's what we're what we learn when we're raising our children and helping them to become strong enough to stand up, to take up for themselves. And if they've done something wrong, to learn there's a consequence and not to take up for them so that they don't understand that when you do something, that there is a result. So many things that we learn in life are tough. And overcoming the challenges is one of those things that we can all just encourage each other in daily. Appreciate you being here, and I look forward to being with you next week on Courage to Overcome. Thank you. This is Cheryl Jennings saying good night tonight. You've been listening to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Be it Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, or autism, listen each week for an informative look into the lives of those challenged by these and other disabilities today on the next episode of Cheryl Jennings' Courage to Overcome. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.